The International Space Station has been operating for over 23 years. Yet, with over 8,000 tons of space junk flying around it at more than 15,000 miles per hour, you can rest assured that if the situation doesn't improve, the clock is ticking before disaster strikes. A disaster that Russia almost provoked in November 2021 when they destroyed a satellite with a missile only to show off, releasing thousands of lethal space debris flying at top speed towards the International Space Station. After the unnecessary explosion, five astronauts and two cosmonauts immediately suited up and took refuge in their capsules, delaying missions and expecting the worst. The Russian missile is only one of the practices that should be over before it's too late. More space junk around the Earth will be a disaster for the scientific community. This could result in an abandoned ISS after 23 years of continuous investigation for a human mistake that lasted only minutes. That event was just one more drop in a sea full of space debris. Scientists estimate that there could be 100 million pieces too small to track that could cause severe damage. The Earth's orbit is under 100 million bullets, constantly traveling at more than 15,000 miles per hour. And the situation only gets worse by the day, two weeks after the Russian missile incident. Mission controllers stopped the ISS crew on its track when they received an alert that more debris was coming to the station, delaying a spacewalk that could result in an unprecedented tragedy. After a few days, they have to do it again, thanks to a warning sign, to dodge an incoming U.S. rocket body that has been orbiting Earth since the 90s. The low Earth orbit is one of the most studied and valuable space areas, home to more than 3,000 satellites used for communications and remote sensing. Collisions happen on this low Earth orbit, and since the space station also occupies that low orbit, each collision only endangers the integrity of the crew and decades of research. With every new satellite, service provider, or launch project into orbit, the danger only increases. It doesn't seem to stop anytime soon. Analysis estimate that the space industry is on its way to reaching $1 trillion in revenue by 2040 which only exacerbates the number of projects that will hit low, medium, and high orbit. The industry is still far from 2040 and that $1 trillion mark, yet over 6,000 satellites are running around, out of which 3,000 are inactive, which translates to more dangerous space junk susceptible to future collisions. The increasing amount of space debris has been going on since the earliest days of space exploration, which started in 1957 with the launch of the Soviet Union satellite Sputnik 1. A satellite that, after three months, completed 1,440 orbits around the Earth and traveled a distance of over 43 million miles. In just three months, imagine the number of orbits a millimetric space junk can make over the years. The amount of residues in combined mass has only risen in the past six decades. After so many years of military, space agencies, and private operators launching thousands of satellites at an uncontrollable rate of more than 8,000 tons, the Earth's orbit is currently cluttered, full of rocket parts, dead satellites, and fragments of hardware that can stay up a millennium if Romans in 650 BC launched a satellite just over the 750 mile high orbit, it would only fall back to Earth today. It is way too far above the atmosphere's drag at that high. Potentially, space junk could render entire orbits unusable, yet they are watching. The base RAF Flying Dales in the New York Moors has a warning system for intercontinental ballistic missiles, yet now it's looking way more than just missiles. It serves as a helpful warning system to look for collisions in space. Flying Dales monitors over 30,000 items of space junk, more significant than 10 centimeters. It is a complex network that lets operators know when a collision may happen, giving them time to move away from it. Yet, the situation has gotten out of control. Over 100 million pieces too small to track are currently running wild and could cause irreparable damage to sophisticated instruments. A micrometer-sized particle can chip windows and dent solar cells, while millimeter-sized flakes can destroy satellite cameras or even puncture astronaut spacesuits. And suppose the junk has just over one centimeter. In that case, it could wipe out an entire satellite with operators never knowing what happened. A dangerous and unpunished disaster caused by thousands of unsustainable projects throughout several decades. To put it into perspective, 
The 10 billion James Webb telescope is currently orbiting the sun around the second Lagrange point, over 1 million miles from Earth. Despite being so far, six micrometeorites hit the primary mirror back in May, suffering significant permanent damage to the area. Imagine the possibilities of that happening so far from Earth. The universe is a hostile environment with millions of tiny pieces at full speed. It only multiplies the chances of disaster. The RAF system watches the heavens from the iconic pyramid thanks to three square sides that provide a 360 degree view of space from Earth to 3,000 miles high. The technology has avoided many collisions in its 30 years, yet it can pick up an object the size of a can of Coke, which is significantly larger than one centimeter. Despite this, it flashes over 3,000 warnings per month thanks to its collaboration with the UK Space Center and the US Space Surveillance Network. When they receive a warning with a risk of collision of more than one in 1,000, operators move their satellite. Yet, that evasive action takes up meaningful resources. They get to burn precious fuel that shortens a satellite's lifespan. With spy satellites, the story is different since there is no way of seeing them on a radar, and it could render the entire orbit unusable to jeopardize other competing nations. And when the collisions, it's inevitable. There is nothing operators 1,200 miles away can do. The current space race on satellite operators is a dangerous trend that could only escalate the problem, the so-called mega constellations. If they are not properly supervised, it could lead to a permanent halt to space exploration. SpaceX and OneWeb launched thousands of small satellites into an already crowded low Earth orbit. Broadband access will bring milestone progress to all humanity, yet traffic jams are a common practice up there. In 2019, ESA took immediate evasive action against a Starlink satellite that didn't want to change its course. The ALOS Earth Observation Satellite decided to dodge the resourceful SpaceX satellite. It was better to move than to regret an irreversible economic loss for ESA. China also blamed the U.S. since one Starlink satellite nearly crashed its astronauts in the Taigong Space Station in July and October. Those are just kilometers away from becoming unprecedented space tragedies. And collisions happen. In February 2009, an operational Iridium communications satellite slammed head-on at an unstoppable 26,000 miles per hour into a defunct Russian military satellite. The impact created millions of tiny pieces that still endanger the zone today, 16 years later. It made many headlines warning the world of this space junk danger, but the truth is that so many satellites are being wiped out by such small fragments that nobody knows the exact number of pieces roaming around the Earth's orbit. And that's counting small debris. Some more risky objects are out there, like old Russian rockets still prone to spontaneous explosions, while ESA's immense satellites are as big as a bus. They are drifting away, waiting for an imminent impact that could send significant amounts of debris to low Earth orbit. Scientists are apprehensive about the Kessler syndrome, where there is so much space junk that one collision could trigger an unstoppable chain reaction, making the orbit off limits for years since we don't have the capacity nor the technology to clean that mess. Yet, we are still far away from protective measures or responsible practices that could avoid this disaster. Countries competing with each other in military demonstrations that explode satellites with missiles? China hit a defunct weather satellite with one and, with that shot alone, increased the low Earth orbit debris by 30%. One missile and one weather satellite increased the debris by 30%, and we are still launching thousands in the future. That's why nations globally and space agencies are taking action. One is to build a better instrument to track that dangerous debris, a feature ESA hopes to achieve by 2024. Other efforts are making the avoid maneuvers automatically so that the satellite reacts on time and autonomously. There are several guidelines by the UN where operators are meant to remove satellites from orbit within 25 years of completing their missions. That massive amount of time tells you a lot about how the current technology is doing those hazardous tasks. Another way is the graveyard orbit, a space where they always got a massive infinite expanding universe to propel the space junk away from the Earth's orbit. But what do you think? Will space junk find a viable solution? Or with over 100 million pieces roaming freely, is it already too late? Tell us in the comments below.